Hello, everyone. Travis Harrington, 2012 alum and offensive coordinator with Bryant University here. I hope you and your family are well, continue to stay healthy and able to find creative ways to keep active and busy during this time. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Coach Chamadi and the Richmond staff for pioneering, orchestrating the Coaching Through Cancellation platform, as well as all the coaches who've already posted and provided some great content thus far. I've certainly watched and learned some things that I plan on bringing back to our program and applying to our guys. Um, our staff is really excited to be a part of C2C, and I'm looking forward to presenting the topic of two-man game, mainly from an offensive standpoint. The presentation is really going to dive into some pick game fundamentals, general concepts, some strategy schemes, some development drills, as well as some live game examples from not only our program, but also others. So I hope you enjoy and are able to take some things away to apply your own programs and really looking forward to getting started. As I say, I'm going to be presenting on the two-man game offense generally, as well as with a focus behind goal line extended. Uh, also going to provide a genesis of picks to explain and give basic fundamental reasoning as to why we set picks, allowing us to set a foundation within our offense and then build from there. A few general reasons why we set picks is that it forces both the on-ball defender and off-ball defender involved in the two-man game to do two things at one time. It forces them to play the man with the ball as well as play the man setting the pick. Number two, it forces the defense to communicate, allowing an offense to take advantage of potential communication breakdowns between maybe number one personnel, for example, an offensive midfielder, face-off specialist, or maybe an LSM behind the goal, as well as number two, potential communication breakdowns based within their schemes on how they play the pick. So some defenses will fight to maintain matchups and will only switch on contact. Some may also maintain matchups unless there is a pick in a certain location, for example, goal line extended. And lastly, some defenses may play picks differently above the goal, on the wing, and below goal, creating a lot of gray for an offense to expose. And then lastly, number three, if the pick is played incorrectly by the defense, it number one enables an offensive player to gain a step towards the goal and slash or forces the defense to rotate, which jump starts and creates instant offense. Why we set picks more specifically and schematically is that it provides separation for a player who may not be able to create without it based on his matchup against a top cover defenseman. Number two, it presents opportunities for a favorable mismatch or a switch, for example, an initiating and playmaking attackman on a short stick D midi that the T defense is going to be hot to slide to, hence jump starting the offense. Number three, it presents offensive options, for example, pick and rolls, pick and pops, pick and slips, pick and repicks, pick on on ball and screen away is off ball. And then also number four, different pick actions, locations, and angles keep the defense constantly guessing. So it's important to practice this to not only build rapport between your ball carrier and pickers, but also limit the predictability when it matters. And then lastly, when setting a pick, always expecting that two defenders may play one. And what this means is defenses jump doubling the ball carrier off of a pick, which the ball carrier is going to need to identify and recognize punch the sideline or end line, carry the double, and move it accordingly to expose the recovery and off-ball slash backside defense. In any two-man game, it involves a two-part equation. It involves the ball carrier and the picker. So some general concepts for the ball carrier is that he must understand how the defense is playing the pick. For example, whether or not they're switching the matchups, they're fighting to maintain and get through, they're jump doubling the ball carrier off of the pick or playing a hangman, whereas the off-ball defender plays in front of the cage as someone executes the two-man game behind the goal. And that ball carrier also needs to understand how we can expose each scheme that the defense is playing within the team game. The ball carrier within our specific offense commands the pick action and dictates the pick location. So he's literally telling the picker, picker what to do and where to do it so that he can play off of it. And we also give the green light to, to the ball carrier to initiate from different key spots behind the goal. So some examples of some pick actions are a normal pick, a swing pick, a slip or a tap and go that we call, a flyby, a pick repick, or a ghost pick. And then different pick locations and initiation points are X, hashes, the deep corners, baseline, and goal line. Um, third, another important concept for the ball carrier is setting his man up to defend the pick and buying time for the picker. So some pick spots may take time for the pick to develop, so he needs to take into account that time and decoys defender. So options for the ball carrier are using the pick, 
rejecting the pick, decoying and using the pick or rejecting the pick and then reusing the pick from there. And then some final concepts for, for the ball carrier, forcing the defender to turn his tips by selling. He is going to use the pick and then rejecting it or selling that he's rejecting the pick and then reusing it. Uh, another one is making sure that he's moving his feet at all times, which is paramount. You know, one buzzword that we utilize is making sure that those guys are shot out of a cannon to overemphasize the speed. We should be coming off of the pick just to gain the separation advantage. And then lastly, we are always telling our guys that we want to assess a redodge opportunity. This means if the defense defeats the pick, we want to assess the matchup, bounce, resquare, and then attack again. Now I'm going to dive into a handful of general concepts for the picker. The most important is developing rapport and chemistry with the ball carrier. He must understand the ball carrier's strengths, tendencies, and preferences ahead of time so that they can provide the offense the best opportunity to gain an advantage. Communication is really a key ingredient to all of this. He must echo the ball carrier's command and then execute the pick accordingly. If he doesn't echo, there may be a confusion causing poor execution, a moving pick, or turnover. Third, we want the picker setting up his pick in motion versus being stationary. The faster we are moving into setting the pick, the less time it gives the defense to communicate. They should be sprinting north-south and timing when the ball carrier is prepared to initiate against his defender. Once the ball carrier begins his initiation, he really should throttle down about five yards from the defender, assess the defender's trajectory, and set the pick in place. The picker may be able to slide one yard east-west into place or back pedal one to two paces to line up the trajectory of the defender. Now, this is the gray area of whether it could be a moving pick, so it's really important to practice gauging a five-yard buffer from the defender. So we constantly use the buzzword five-yard buffer for our pickers to, to make sure that they're setting their picks in place and not moving. So having a, a good shoulder-to-foot ratio, the stick in between their shoulder blades right there. We don't want wide bases. That's illegal. Um, another concept is the picker needs to understand the location of his pick and the angle that the ball carrier is going to explode off of it towards the goal. We don't really want the picker to bow the ball carrier's dodge, which would allow the defense to easily recover. And then just some final concepts are, are never losing vision of the ball. The, pick should the picker should always open up to the ball carrier and never turn his head and lose sight of the ball. He should also never stand still post pick. He should be constantly focusing on the next play and how we can expose the two man game, whether that's, you know, the slip or that's a flyby executing back into a repick situation and then lastly he's constantly needs to assess if there's a repick opportunity if the defense fights through and maintains the matchup the next segment i'm going to provide a chalk talk on two-man game behind entry types a two-man game locations and initiation points as well as a variety of pick actions that can be executed behind the goal i will then show some practice film of our token two-man and double double re-attack re-drills then lastly i'll talk through a variety of live game examples from our program as well as others to show it being executed when it matters now we're going to go over one of our fundamental two-man development drills called token two-man so how it works is is you're going to put a line of your attack and middies directly at x you're going to put a line on the right side that's roughly about, you know, outside the hash, seven yards up. Don't want to overtax the guys running into it too much. Then you're going to put another one on the other side accordingly, okay? So now what we're going to talk about are entry points. So we can have a strong entry point to a two-man game behind, which means the ball carrier tests his matchup into it dodges into it and then throws into the two-man game from there just like that so that'd be a strong entry point or we would have a weak entry point where the ball carrier dodges into it he throws to the initiator which is typically an attackman and then the weak side comes in to set the pick game from there and obviously you also have to practice the ball carrier that originally entered the ball to the x attackman of getting back up into your framework in front of the goal whatever that may be so those are two different entry points from in front of the goal into your two main game behind and then we also talk about shots off of end line so what we'll do to practice this is we'll put three lines in front of the goal just like this. We'll put one defender, two defenders, two token defenders in, and then myself, which typically I will be the pull in, 
and then three O guys will come in and spaghetti on the inside. Now, when there's a shot, which could be to the corner, directly at X, directly to this corner, these three guys have to read who the pole picks up. So typically these are middies. So if I pick up this guy, this, this o offensive player, and this offensive player have got to recognize and also determine who we typically do, would prefer having going behind the goal in the two-man game. For example, typically we have middies in front of the goal that we prefer having in front of the goal and they're not necessarily comfortable being behind, but we also have some guys that are middies that have played attack in the past or are more than capable of being much more versatile and dynamic, playing in front of the goal, playing from the wing, wherever it may be. So those guys got to assess that situation and communicate who's going to go back and set the pick. So in that case, let's say this guy's a, a me that we want in front of the goal. This guy's got to read it, and then he'll go back and set the pick and communicate there, just making sure we're having a seamless um, transition into our two-man game after our offense has been generated in front. And then how the rotation works is the two O guys that did not get the ball then become defenders, and then the guy that set the pick becomes uh, an initiator behind, then the initiator behind comes up into the up-top piece. Now, we're going to talk about locations. Now, for us, our, our initiators are the ones that are obviously commanding the pick types that they have, and also they are also dictating the pick locations. So what they also have the empowerment to do is initiate from any point that they want. So first and foremost, an initiator can initiate an X. They can initiate just on the hash or outside the hash. We'll have them initiate from the deep corners which again pulls two defenders far away from the cage. And if we can get them, if we can expose them far away from the cage, then the ball carrier's got much more time to react if you know the defense rotates to them and, and much more time to do so. Then again, you can have them initiating on the baseline, which would be essentially a razor pick. And then again, other pick location would be goal line extended. But these are the main initiation points that we talk about. Um, within our offense right there. So those are locations in terms of initiating, and these are also pick locations. So your pick locations would be at X, you know, on the hash, deep corner, GLE, goal line, same thing. Hash, deep corner, baseline, and goal line. So you see the circles are our initiation points that we talk about. The triangles are really where we want to be executing the pick action from a location standpoint. Now, within the drill, we're going to talk about our actions that we'll practice. So again, coming back to the two-man game, very basic. We're just going to talk about you know strong entries. So Again, when he dodges hard into it, he's going to throw it just like this and simply executing a normal pick, you know, you know, having the correct fundamentals, the five yard buffer here. And again, the ball carrier is going to also practice different ways to use the pick. So he can use the pick, he can reject it, he can decoy away and then use the pick or what he can do is, is he can come into the pick and then reject it from, the, or sorry, excuse me, he can, use, he can use it, he can reject it, then come back and use it. So we use all those different angle points um, when it comes to executing, you know, how to enter into the pick game there. We also have swing picks. So this is where the ball carrier would kind of enter in. He passes and now he swings to the opposite side. Again, ball carrier's got his option of either using it, rejecting, decoying, using, or rejecting, then using it. A slip also could be called the tap and go. So that's where the ball carrier comes in and almost kind of brushes him. So he taps and then slips off. And a big key is opening up his gate to the ball carrier. He wants to open up to the ball, not show his head. So this exposes typically defense that want to switch the matchup. A flyby would be really you want your initiator outside the hash. So if there's the football hashes here, just because as this guy comes into this, once he gets to this point, he's kind of simulating that he's going to set the pick. Defender might be trailing him. And just when he gets to this opposite pipe, 
he's going to jet hard here and maybe take advantage of this defender that's kind of trailing him right there. Now, this, this attackman can kind of give a nice little dump feed to it right there, but if it's not there, don't force it. This then attackman then can split under, and this is a great opportunity to re-pick out of it on the on-ball defender right there if you don't get it, um, which would then be your re-pick option. And then lastly, a ghost pick, which would be defenses that are very fast to flush the picker. How we would do this is you have your initiator here, your defender on ball here, you set your ghost pick directly at X, and then your defender here. Now, it's almost like a post up. So when this guy goes, this defender's gotta make a decision. He's either just gonna let him go, and now you got a direct attack right to the goal, towards the goal here, which is a pretty good angle. Or if this defender slides, then you flash, that's a great passing angle. Now, the one thing that you always gotta be ready for on all your slip, flybys, and ghost picks is the defense rotating down from the backside, which we'll actually practice every once in a while. So once we get kind of the fundamental baseline in, we will then practice adding defenders on each side to hit, to really come down and slam the us trying to work on the slip. So actually giving a real life example of that right there. So that'd be our token two man drill right there. The other drill that I'll show you will be the double, double read attack, read drill, re attack pipe drill. So now I will be here as a defender. How it's going to work is the strong side or weak side, however we decide to do it, we'll throw into it. And then how this is going to work is, is once we set the pick and this an offensive player comes off of it, I'm going to make one or two decisions. I'm going to hold the pipe, which then that is, what that means is this initiator has got to bounce and reattack the pipe for the picker to then drift and influence that, that backside attack defender. Or if I completely commit, so he sets the pick, he comes hard off of it. If I slide heavy and double, he's gonna punch the sideline, drag the double, and then make a good roll pressure pass to the ex-attackman, and we just do a simple turn the corner and finish. That would be our double-double re-attack pipe drill. So the first one is token two-man. This is double-double pipe re-attack read. Now I want to present practice film of the token two-man drill. So what, I'm, what we're going to talk about is just normal picks, swing picks, razor picks, and then a situation where when we generate a switch where our picker will actually take the pull away just because it's simulating that our attackman is generating a short stick matchup, which is favorable to us. So we're going to take the pull away um, and actually practice reading that situation. So really what we'll do with this drill is we'll do strong entry points, weak entry points. So weak entry point would be number 13 comes down, throws it to the X attackman. He comes up in and then we come in from the weak side with the pick angle from that perspective. And we'll also initiate from X. The, the, the hashes here, the deep corners, as well as these razor picks as well. So, you know, we're practicing different initiation points, different entry points, as well as different pick locations to build rapport between the initiator and the picker. Now, the initiator needs to command what pick he wants, where he wants it, and then the picker is echoing it. The ball carrier can use the pick, reject the pick, or decoy and then use it. So there's a decoy, then use. Now we got swing picks. Same thing we can do a strong side or a weak side entry point. A little bit of a decoy to buy time for the picker to get set. Then 23 should be a supporting ball side pipe there as the ball carrier drives up to goal line extended five and five. Again, buying a little bit of time. Razor picks, we can also do this one as well from strong side, weak side entry points. Really want to set that pick right around the hash or just outside of it. One more example, and now number 34 can either on the razor pick, he can come in front of the goal or he can come behind the goal. Now, if he goes in front, really want to try and set that pick right on goal line extent in the hash. If he goes underneath, he can have the the preference of setting goal line extent right on the hash goal line extended 
or between that and three yards below. Then he should be following him right here to the ball side pipe, just like he does there. Now we're going to work on the switch read. So we generate the switch. The attackman's got the short stick matchup. Take the pull away. Same thing, we generate the switch, a little bit more urgency there, take the pull away, and then we can also look to re-pick this defender if number 22 looks to attack this way against the short stick. Now we'll actually do this token two-man drill against our defense as well, where we'll put the on-ball defense line right in front of the goal, and then the off-ball defenders on each line, and really what we look to do is, is just play the pick live from that standpoint so there's no checks no shots it's just over emphasizing the fundamentals and the basics of offensive two-man game and defensive two-man game now we're going to work on the double double and pipe re-attack read so typically when i do any of these token two-man drills or even this double double pipe re-attack read drill i'll just pretty much tell the offensive guys you get two or three pick choices that's it. I'll, I'll dictate what picks I want those guys to see, utilize ultimately, just so we're not clouding with, with five, six, seven different picks. So we'll, we'll overemphasize focusing on those two. But really what they're looking to do is once I get a heavy double here, the X attackman's got to scream double-double, we punch the sideline and have a good roll pressure pass and just turn the corner opposite. Very basic. Same thing. I'm going to heavy double to the back of the head. Double-double communication, attack opposite. Now the next phase that they got to read is when they come up, if I hold the pipe, he's got to re-attack now to influence this pipe defenseman. If I hold the pipe, what we want to look to do is drift X and then move it there and then attack opposite. Or if I, if I press the drift, he's going to look to get skinny to the far pipe. One more example, drives up, I hold the pipe, and he re-attacks, influences, we drift X, and we finish the drill there. Now we're gonna work out, now we're gonna look at live game footage, just on some of the picks that we talked about. So here's one example, a strong side entry point, testing into it, he gets the defender to kind of open up his hips to the pick, he rejects it, attacks the top foot, defender opens up his hips, Another example of rejecting the pick, so we communicate swing here. Defender kind of opens up his hips to see the picker. We go to our offhand. Pretty good trajectory to the towards the front of the goal. One more example. Now this is a hangman situation. This is where the short stick plays in front of the goal. Set the pick. We end up rejecting it. And we're going to talk about swing picks. So again, the off-ball defender's kind of in the trail. You said a good pick just inside the hash. Maybe a little bit moving. You should have a five-yard buffer there. That's how a swing pick is executed. Another example of it. Swing pick. Off-ball defender's in the trail. Creates a pretty advantageous opportunity. Now, razor picks. Now we're coming in from the weak side. So number 13, pass down. Now we're coming from the weak side and setting this razor pick. Kind of slips it because they look to jump double it, the ball carrier here. So that's a razor pick coming in from the weak side. Now here's a razor pick to a re-pick. So they maintain their matchup. Now there's a great opportunity for the picker to assess a re-pick opportunity. And he does it right on goal line extended. Two play one. They move it accordingly. Generate a hangman situation. Another example of a pick to re-pick. Pick. Re-pick re on goal line extended. And they get a favorable matchup. Now they slip to re-pick. It's not there. Now, if you can pin your own defenseman down, this is going to create a double pick situation. So the Yale attackman does a great job of slipping it, doesn't generate an advantage, looks to re-pick his own man.
One more example of picking your own defender. They want to maintain their matchups, pick their own man on goal line extended. Now when defenses jump the ball carrier off of a pick, we got to punch the sideline, drag the double, and move it either forward or roll the pressure and throw it accordingly. What, another example, set the pick, they jump double to play one, shot shows opposite to the backside. Last example, this is probably the best example of it, heavy jump double, he punches the end line, drags the double team, roll pressure pass, and get a pretty good opportunity. And that concludes my presentation on the two-man game from an offensive standpoint. I would really like to thank you for your time and viewing here today. I certainly hope that you were able to take away some things and feel that you can apply to your very own programs. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me via our staff email. And in the meantime, I hope that you and your family continue to stay well and healthy. Take care and go Bulldogs.